Good day, grade 11s. Welcome to week 36, where we are now looking at week 35. We're now looking at preparation for our final exams. And this week, we're going to be going through a paper one with a whole bunch of questions from paper one. And we will, next week, we'll be looking at paper two. And this lesson, we're starting with just looking at going through some multiple choice questions. So it says, two vectors P and Q act simultaneously at point O. As shown in the diagram, the magnitude of Q is greater than the magnitude of P, which we should have seen anyway, because Q is longer than P. And it says, which one of the following could represent the resultant R of the two vectors? Hmm. So let's think about this. Do you see that O is being pulled this way? And it's been pulled this way. So there are two ways we can think about it. We can see that, okay, either we can look at completing the parallelogram, or we could do a head to tail, in which case I need to transplant one of these. I'm going to transplant that to over there, and I'm going to transplant that to there. So do you agree that the resultant would be up this way? So the correct answer is actually going to be D, this one here. The resultant is going to be that the, even though there are two forces acting on it, it's still going to move up towards the right because Q is so much bigger than P and it's just going to be pulled slightly off the direction. Let's move on to the next question. It says forces P, Q, R and S all have the same magnitudes. They all have the same magnitude. Okay. The forces act at the same point in the directions as shown. Okay, so do you agree that Q and S actually cancel each other out? Okay, because Q and S are exactly the same magnitude and they're vertically opposite. So they actually cancel each other out. So we really just need to look at R and P. And it says which one of the following combinations correctly shows the vectors having the greatest magnitude in the X component and for the Y component? So if we had to look at the components of P, we could see that the component of P goes all the way along here and then a little bit up, whereas R goes a little bit along here, but then a very big down. Okay, so do you agree that when we're talking about the X components, vector P is going to have the longest component. So the X vector P is going to have the longest component. Now we need to look for the Y components. And the Y components we either have, it says, it's going to either be R, okay, it has to be vector R because it can't be vector Q because we've already said they cancel. So it is vector R. So the correct answer is A. Let's move on to the next question. It says, if the resultant or net force acting on an object is zero, the object does what? So what we're saying is if net, equals mass times acceleration. So if this is zero, do you agree there is no acceleration? Because the mass can't be zero, because we can't suddenly just not be there, okay? So therefore, the acceleration is zero. So can the object slow down? No, it cannot, because acceler slowing down is just negative acceleration, and we said there is no acceleration. So it cannot slow down, it cannot accelerate uniformly, because we've just said that. Now, the options are either it changes its direction of motion or continues moving with a constant velocity. And what you need to realize is that acceleration is a vector. So if I'm going at a constant velocity but I change direction the whole time, I'm actually accelerating. So therefore the correct answer is that it continues moving with a constant velocity. No net force, no acceleration, continues moving with a constant velocity. Right, let's carry on. It says the graph of the gravitational force versus the mass of an object is shown below. Okay, so what do we know? We know that F is equal to big G M1 M2 over R squared. We also know that F is equal to MG. Okay, and they say that this is the gravitational force and this is versus the mass. And it says which one of the following correctly represents the slope of the graph? Well, if we look at this, do you see that this is F equals MG and if 
this, if I had to rearrange this, I'd had F over M is equal to G, where this is the Y, the force, yay, and this is the mass, yay, and G. So therefore, this is acceleration due to gravity. So therefore, the correct answer has to be C, the acceleration due to gravity. Now it says, a light wave, a wave travels obliquely from A into a glass block with the, and its speed changes. Okay, so here is air and here is glass and it travels into it, okay? And it's going to do what? It's going to bend towards the normal because it's going to go slower and then it's going to bend away from the normal. So that's what it does. Now it says, which one of the following combinations correctly describes the changes in the frequency of the wave and the refractive index of the block compared to that of the air? Now frequency is actually dependent on the source, is dependent on the source, okay? So your frequency is not going to change at all, so it's going to remain the same. But the refractive index, it says, what does, how does the refractive index change of the block compared to the air? Well, the glass block's refractive index is always, always, always higher than air. So the refractive index is going to increase. So the correct answer is A. Sound waves bend readily around buildings, whereas light waves only bend very slightly around buildings. Okay, we've seen this. Okay, that's why we get shadows. Okay, whereas we can know that for a fact we can hear sound from quite far away. It says, which one of the following statements best explains this observation? Okay, so sound waves have longer wavelengths, sound waves have got shorter wavelengths, sound waves have got higher frequencies, sound waves have got greater amplitudes. Okay, so it's got nothing to do with the amplitude because the amplitude is really to do with the volume or how bright the light is. Okay, sound waves of higher frequency compared to light waves, mm, not really true. So we need to look at your wa longer wavelengths. The fact is the sound waves can bend around buildings because they've got longer wavelengths. So therefore they find it more easy to bend around it. Now it says, electrostatic force between two charged spheres, the distance R apart is F. So we've got F is equal to K, Q1, Q2 over R squared, okay, R apart. When the charge on each sphere is doubled, okay, so we've got K, 2Q1, 2Q2, okay, and the distance between the spheres is doubled, so all of it, 2R, all doubled. It says, what is the force? Well, we've still got K, 2 times 2 is 4, Q1, Q2, all over 2 times 2 is 4, R squared. Cancel, cancel, so the answer is K, Q1, Q2, over R squared, which is the original one. So the answer is B. So what did I do here? Basically, I put into my equation, this is my original, and now what I've done is I've put into the equation exactly what they've said. They said the charge on each sphere is doubled. So therefore Q1 is now 2Q1 and Q2 is 2Q2. And they say the distance between the spheres is also doubled. But this is tricky. You must remember that. That means that R becomes 2R, but then you square it. So it becomes 2R all squared, which is 4R squared, and then you just solve. Okay. Now it says the electrostatic force between two charged particles is positive. Which one R is correct? Okay. It says the electrostatic force between two charged particles is positive. If it's positive, then what does it mean? It means that it's going to attract. Okay, the magnitude of two charges are equal, we don't know that. The charge on one is positive and the other is negative, we don't know that. The electrostatic force between the two charges is attractive. Or the electrostatic force between the two charges, this is a stupid question, we're not going to do this question. Moving on. A conducting wire moves between two magnets as shown. So we've got a wire and you've got a North Pole and a South Pole. 
and it says which one of the following actions can lead to increased induced current in the wire XY. So what are we doing? We're taking this wire and we're moving it between these two things and we want to know how do we make the current bigger? How do we make the current bigger? Well, we can move the wire more quickly. Do we agree? We can move it more quickly. We can increase the current. We can increase the strength of the magnets, the strength of the magnets and remember we always have to make sure that the wire is perpendicular to the magnetic field. So it says we can move the wire quickly and parallel to the magnetic field? No. Slowly and parallel? No. Quickly and perpendicular? Yes. The correct answer is C. Now it says a learner wants to measure the current and potential difference across a resistor in a circuit. So we know that he has to use Ohm's law, which is, says V is equal to IR. He wants to measure the current and the potential difference. So R is equal to V over I. Right, that's what he's doing. Which one of the following circuits will the learner be able to use to take these readings? Okay, so first of all, what do we need? We need the voltmeter to be in parallel with the resistor. So the voltmeter must be parallel with the resistor and the ammeter must be in the circuit. So it must be in series with the resistor. So here is a resistor. Again, okay, there is our circuit and yeah, your ammeter is parallel to it. So that can't work. Yeah, we've got our series circuit and we've got the ammeter, that's wonderful. But now the voltmeter is across the ammeter instead of over the resistor, so that's wrong. Yeah, we've got a series circuit, but yeah, both the ammeter and the voltmeter are <laughs> in parallel to the resistor, so that's not going to work. And finally, we've got a series circuit here where the ammeter is in series with the resistor and the voltmeter is across the resistor. Yay! That works. Awesome. And that grade 11s is the multiple choice or other multiple choice questions for this section. Please make sure you understand what we were doing and why we went through it and what we were doing. Please can you be careful and if you don't understand what's going on, go through the sections in the year during the term. Have a great day.